the more you did it, the easier it got. I remember the, the first time I did it, I was dreaming in English and I woke up and I said, whoa, I, I'm really here now, you know, like wow. it's, it's starting to all come together. Where do you think you would be now if you hadn't done the au pair program? Um, who? Oh. My name is Tyler and I'm here with Au Pair Care talking to former au pair Lara who is visiting her host family here in Davis, California for the summer. Let's go hear Lara's au pair story. Exactly. And it sounds like you're really, really good with babies and, small, and with children. Yeah. I mean, I um, started babysitting when I was 13 mm -hmm. and I took care of a six-year-old and a three-month-old. So mm -hmm. like at a pretty young age, I had already the experience with like a really young baby mm -hmm. and I realized I have like the patience for it like I th yeah. think some people like the patience but like it's just really fun and also I like to talk a lot and babies they're just listening they're like <laughs> great I'm gonna listen and maybe I learn some stuff so I think that's maybe also why it works so good absolutely <laughs> babies. I'm just like telling them taught was teaching them new words <laughs> exactly I love that it's, that's so true they're yeah. like the best people to just vent to. They're just, yeah. They're always listening. Yeah, exactly. So, so it sounds like you've had tons of experience with kids yeah. before when you're in your youth. Um, so what, what prompted you to uh, join the au pair program? Um, I think it was my, the first family I took care of their children when I was 13. Mm -hmm. they, the mom was pr really good friends with my mom. Mm -hmm. So we always went on vacation together and they became like a second family to me. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that. And like I was there every week, sometimes twice a week um, to take care of the kids in the evening. And like then we visited on weekends because they lived like really close by. It was five mm -hmm. minutes by foot. So it was mm -hmm. like fine. And it was just, it was just great. And I was like, oh, I feel like I really want to travel, but I was too scared to like do the work and travel, like being all on your own was mm -hmm. like, I was 18. I didn't feel like comfortable with that. And then I heard about the au pair program. I think it was in like 10th grade. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that because it's like, I want to be, have like a second family. I want to be like a part of the family. Mm -hmm. I want to see the children like grow up and like, especially also, I feel like with the baby, you see like so much change in them, which oh, is like yeah. just awesome. And yeah, with Hartley and her right arm, like she, I don't know if you know that, but she has cere cerebral palsy. Um, and I didn't, uh, I didn't know that when I came here, but I didn't know like exactly what that means. Um, but it meant like her right arm was not really functioning. It was always in the fist and she couldn't like really open it or like move her arm that much. So she had a lot of therapy mm -hmm. and I was a part of that. And it was really cool to see because therapists came to our home and like I helped them sometimes and like it was great to see the progress there too. Like not only growing up, but also like her progress yeah. with the right arm and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's just with like young children, it's really cool to see what's like there's so much happening i think that makes it more entertaining absolutely i mean it sounds like you're just so passionate about like being able to take care of like these young children being a part of part of their lives like a yeah. fundamental time of their lives and that's really special that like you have this gift and ability to like uh, to do that because not not every person is able to i guess connect with young children and oh, yeah. really develop a bond with them so that's like a, i think that's a really important skill and yeah. Obviously, you've been able to show that with the Sinclair family. I mean, yeah. these, these kids adore you, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I adore them, so it's yeah. like mutual. mutual. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I think it's if you, if you put like a lot of effort into it, and I think that's like something, if you like to take care of kids and like play with kids, it's easy for you to like, you just need to care about them and mm -hmm. about like, and then like the whole au pair year is just so much fun yeah. because like even when you're working, of course there were days where I was like, oh, I really don't feel like it right now. It's like a long day, but like most of them were so much fun and like you had so many different activities mm -hmm. you could do and like, yeah, it's yeah. just, and then the traveling, I mean, is also really nice mm -hmm. because yes. like there's also like the, uh, the communication with your host family, like telling them, hey, can I get a day off here or like to, to make it as smooth and easy um, to like try to do it as like if you know you go be you will be gone in June mm -hmm. tell them in April if you know it already you know like yeah. to like make it all smoothly so yeah. then it's really easy to travel all over the place yeah just your like earlier points like communication is key yeah. like yeah, for, exactly. for everything um, yeah so when you decided to join the au pair program 
sounds like you had already graduated high school. Yes. Was this kind of like your gap year? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I wanted to do a gap year because I was 18 and I felt like um, I did like in Germany you can do it. 12 or 13 years of high, high school mm -hmm. and I did the shortened version of 12 years so I felt like I have this extra year mm -hmm. and I should use it to like travel yeah. and also like I knew kind of what I wanted to do afterwards mm -hmm. but it wasn't like set in stone and I heard about so many people changing their careers after the gap year so I was like I should like do that and see if maybe it will influence my career path, which in the end it did. So it was yeah. a good thing and I'm really glad I did it. So what were your original plans uh, of your career like before you joined the au pair program? Um, I wanted to become a teacher for high school. I wanted to study math and maybe English. I wasn't sure or like Spanish because I also really liked Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, but then like at the end of my au pair year with like Hartley and seeing her progress, like just the therapy was really fun and like you could see how much like this it was just like playing and stuff and like it made like it made such a big difference to Hartley and her like uh, independence so this kind of inspired me and I was like I really want to like do that too so I um, looked into becoming an OT or a, a occupational therapist or like a physical therapist mm -hmm. in the end I decided to become an occupational therapist because it's the like it's more for children like mm -hmm. physical therapy is also like it's more based on adults so yeah. um and it really yeah i'm really glad i did it because i love my new job i'm really excited about it and it's all thanks to hartley and <laughs> my experience so yeah wow. it's great that's so special it's like yeah i mean before coming in did you ever think about occupational therapy no. like at all no and i always was also i feel like it's something like I didn't have any, like I was never in touch of anybody with like such a problem or like even like a disability. So it was never like, it didn't even occur to me. And also I had like a lot of respect for it mm -hmm. in the beginning, like working with disabled people and like, I hope I'm not doing anything wrong and right, something like that was yeah. like something why I never considered it. But um, after seeing Hartley, and seeing how much, yeah, the difference it makes for kids, but also mm -hmm. adults, like after stroke, whatever. Yeah. It like, yeah, it was just like the right choice. And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I love that. <laughs> That's so cool that you found something that you like really are passionate about and that you love. Yeah. And that you're able to start your career in that. And it's like all from just this one, one year of your life as an au pair. Yeah. So I can imagine one year sounds like a lot, but in, in, regards to like an entire life one year is not that long and like when you uh, at the beginning when i started my or like started like looking into it i was like oh gosh a year like sounds like so much i would love to only do nine months that sounds not as scary but you can't do that in the us and i'm glad you can't because um one year when you're doing it is not enough time i wish i would have extended so like um one year's like is the minimum yeah. and yeah, because yeah. that's when you like finally like, I think after six months, you're like really settled in, you have your friends and then it's like really fun and like you don't want to leave. And then like going back to Germany was really hard with like just having so much fun here. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So I'm curious, uh, what was your first week like as an au pair? Because like, I mean, you just graduated high school, you come from Germany to the US, and you're living with a family who you've only met through your interview process beforehand yeah. and it's like that is such a dramatic shift in just like your life and I'm just I can only imagine like how kind of ner nervous and excited you probably were when you started so could you just walk us through like what your first week was like yeah um so I was definitely very nervous also excited but very nervous because um, I actually have never seen a picture of my room before oh. because uh, they were renovating it and then we never got around to it, which was fine because I was like, you know, it's going to be a surprise. It's OK. I'm gonna... But so um, I talked to Caitlin and Chris and we texted a little, um, but they were super busy. So we weren't that much in touch. Um, so, yeah, it was nerve wracking at first. And like I remember landing and I think my flight was delayed. So uh, it was supposed to be Caitlin and the older girls and Chris picking me up. Um, 
But then because my flight got delayed, it was only Caitlin. And I remember like being super excited, like walking down and seeing her, like we hugged and we we're like, hi, and then like waited for my luggage and we like kind of started small talk. And I remember how, how weird it was to suddenly like speak English because when I was in New York, mm -hmm. um, I had some German people around me. So I was speaking a little English, but mostly German. So that was like a big adjustment to be like, okay, now I need to like start to figure out how to express myself in English. And one thing I didn't know how to say was, I'm getting used to it, which is something you need. <laughs> like that's like something you really need in your yeah. first week because Chris, um, I remember we were driving and he told me, how do you like it so far? And I'm like, oh yeah, I mean, it's great. It's different. I'm, and then I was like struggling and he told me, ah, you probably mean you're getting used to it. And that's how I learned it. I was like, yeah, you're yeah. right. I'm getting used to everything. Yeah. Um, I like seeing the girls was great. Hardly gave me a hard time at the beginning. <laughs> so it was kind of like, but the baby, I mean, babies are usually, you know, fine. Yeah. Uh, and babies usually like me, so that was not a problem. Yeah. And Kenzie and Eddie were great. But I was just like meeting them and like the first, like first dinner and like everything where you're talking about yourself mm -hmm. in a different language. It was all really exciting. But then like after my first night, it became better and better because what they tell you at like the au pair school, I don't know what to say, like what to call it in New York, mm -hmm. is to not stay in your room, get yeah. out there, talk to them. And that's what I did. And I remember Caitlin and Chris told me, we were like super surprised because I'm the first au pair. So for them, it was also a new experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think after my first one or two day, days of like going to bed early because I w had a jet lag, mm -hmm. I was just like, sitting on the couch and they were watching TV and like, so like, what are we watching? They're like, oh, uh, and then like we talked. And so that's, I think the best way to like, just get an easy adjustment into the family because when you're always around, like even after you're off and you're talking to them, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Like yeah. that's how you uh, feel at home really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like, um, a lot of advice I hear from uh, other host families and au pairs and from our area directors is like, you know, those first few weeks, it's really important to just mm. be present, be with the family, be yeah. with the kids, bond with them, because that first impression really matters. And it sounds like that first week, like you, you know, were out there with your family yeah. and talking to them and getting used to them. And I'm sure for you, it was nerve wracking uh, oh, yeah. meeting this family in person for the first time. And I'm sure for them, it was also they're also kind of nervous of like, there's this person living in our house. So yeah. not only did your participation make yourself feel comfortable, you, but you also helped them feel comfortable as well. Because exactly. it shows that like, you want to be there, you want to be a part of the family. Yeah. And that's really cool. Yeah. And I think that's really, really great skill and really good thing to do in the first yeah. kind of few weeks um, of your program. Yeah, I think also like when they're going on a bike ride or like a trip, just tag along you know like just be a part of it and like you don't even need to like you can talk but sometimes it's also good to just watch so you can get into like the family dynamic and also what I remember what I just remembered um what made my welcome more easy is like um Kenzie and Eddie made like little posters like welcome posters and there was like a little basket with like some uh deodorant and shower gel and stuff so and shampoo so that's also something that like my host family tried to make me feel at home right away. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I tried to return the favor of like just being present and yeah, yeah it worked out fine. <laughs> yeah, it's an exchange. I mean, yeah. like the au pair program is like cultural exchange and you're exactly. doing more than just exchanging culture, exchanging like bonds and kind of, uh, you know, putting out the same kind of uh, energy and warmth as they give to you, which is really yeah. special. Um, it is. So what, I guess like what were your first impressions of the US when you first came here? I think that's one thing I like I'm always curious about is when people from other countries come to America like what do they first think especially when it comes to driving cuz yeah. <laughs> I know in the US our cars are big, our roads are huge and there's the infrastructure is way is built for cars rather than people. So like yeah. how coming from Europe what was that like? Um actually funny that you say that because that was the first thing that came to my mind because when we were driving back to the airport I was like whoa because like Caitlin's car is huge all the like roads are huge and I was like and I told her like I can't imagine like driving here like it feels like this car is way too big even though the street is big too like 
I don't know, it just doesn't feel like, uh, it feels scary. And she's like, ah, oh, you'll be fine. And I'm like, okay. Um, but yeah, it was like, it's an adjustment because here there are no sidewalks. That was weird, like, um, because in Germany that you have sidewalks everywhere. Mm -hmm. And like, as I asked Caitlin, like, are people not walking? She's like, yes, they are, but just like on the street. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, in Davis, it's nice because we have the green belt, which is like a bike path where you can also walk and it's not by any street. Mm -hmm. So that's a little nicer to like, if you want to go on a walk and we have some parks close by. So like that didn't, I didn't miss that that much because I had opportunities, but still like I was shook in the beginning, but like driving in general, mm -hmm if you like get over the first shock is it's way easier than in Germany like you have yeah. all the green arrows which makes like tur turning left way easier mm -hmm. um only rule that's different to the German rules is I think that like w when you turn right and it's red mm -hmm. you stop and then you can like look and turn right mm -hmm. we have it different like we have a sign that says you can do that, otherwise oh, you're not allowed to. So in the beginning I was always standing there and sometimes I got honked at because <laughs> I forgot and I was like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, but also like with the miles powers, it's also like an adjustment, but I mean, it's fine. But I was in the beginning, I remember I was always curious to like know like in like how much kilometer per hour is mm -hmm. this? Like yeah. what would be the, like is it the same as in Germany or is it faster, slower and like, America is a little slower than Germany with like the speed limits, oh, but yeah. yeah, especially with like the Autobahn. True. You probably <laughs> heard about it. Yes. Um, it's yeah. Yeah. A little faster. And I think also what is really different is the highways and freeways mm -hmm. because they are everywhere <laughs> like, and they're like so crowded. And that was one thing I was really scared of in the beginning because in Germany you can't pass a car on the right side. Oh, really? So slow traffic goes on the right and faster traffic on the left. If you want to pass somebody, you go on the left lane or the middle lane, depending on where the cars you want to pass. And mm -hmm. then you can pass. You can't pass on the right. It's illegal. And the police can stop you for that. Uh, so that was like an adjustment for me to mm -hmm. be like watching out to both sides and like, oh, yeah, I can pass them and all this stuff. But yeah. I think people are scared of it a lot, but it's not that scary. If yeah. you did it, like, it's fine. Yeah, once you do it a couple of times, yeah. like, it, it, fe it feels natural. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I first started driving, I was also scared, but after a while, you just get used to it. Yeah. Every it's not as scary as it seems. No, and also, you're driving automatic. I was used to manual, and automatic is so much easier. Yeah. But I actually, funny thing, in the beginning, I used both feet. <laughs> I used the left foot for, I think it's the brake and right for gas. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't know. But so, and then Chris looked at me and was like, Tara, what are you doing? You just use your right foot. I'm like, oh yeah, that's why it felt so weird because like my braking was really sloppy. It was like, Caitlin was like this the whole time. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to. And yeah, in the end I figured out um, I should just use one foot, not both. That's funny. You know? <laughs> um, I can see how that would be like, yeah. quite a little, a little scary for the passengers. Yeah. Um, but after we got that sorted, everything yeah. else just fell into place. Of and then course. driving was really easy and it's convenient. The drive throughs True. America is all about convenience. Yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, and another thing I'm curious about, you know, the au pair program is really, yeah. uh, I, I, I guess one aspect of the au pair program is not, not really just like childcare for the family, yeah. but also the cultural exchange. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about kind of like how you exchange your German culture with your host family? Yeah. So Chris, actually, I think in my first week asked me about like German politics and I was like, oh, <laughs> because that's like such a complex topic right in the beginning mm -hmm. and because Chris really likes uh, politics. So that's how like we started like exchanging because then, I mean, I kind of knew a lot of politics of the US, but there's still a lot of stuff that I didn't know that they told me about. So that's how we started. Then, of course, the food, like they're eating their food, but also mm -hmm. I made um, German pizza for the Germans. It's Flammkuchen. Um, and they were really skeptical at first because it's like a thin dough. You put creme fraiche, sliced onions and sliced bacon on it, mm -hmm. and then you bake it. And they were like, 
there's no cheese on the pizza. And my husband was like, the, the, the kids are not gonna eat it. And she was like trying to figure out a, ba a backup plan. But in the end, everybody loved it. Now I have to make it every time. So I think food is like a big thing, how to like exchange your culture. Mm -hmm. 100% like food. I mean, it's, we all eat food yeah. and I think, you know, showing, showing what we eat in different, uh, different parts of the world just really connects us and shows oh, us yeah. like how about other places, which is really cool. Yes. Um, I didn't know this, but apparently in Sweden, it's popular to put bananas on pizza. Oh, I didn't know that either. Yeah. I, That's, did you try it? I've never tried it. I, I heard this on TikTok, so. Okay. Take that for, take that information for what you will. Yeah. But I heard multiple people saying they put bananas on pizza. So I feel like German pizza is probably way better than that. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, I don't know if you like pizza uh, with pineapple on it. I do. I do. I do so, too. and that's also like controversial. So maybe banana isn't as bad. Mm. You just need to try it. True. <laughs> that's true. Just, have a, just keep an open mind. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe the next Swedish au pair can tell you about if that's actually a thing and if it tastes good. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, bust that myth. Yeah. <laughs> so when you came into the au pair program, like what was your definition of like, or what was your vision of being a successful au pair? Or did you have one coming yeah. into it? Um, I was picturing myself just like in this family, like, sharing meals together, laugh, talk, and like, of course, take care of the kids and like help out with them. And just like have this feeling of being a part of the family. Like at home, I have two siblings and we always eat together. We are a big family, like there's always people over. So I really wanted to be like the same kind of, so like I have a second family. Mm -hmm. And also I really wished for like, a lot of stuff going on. I don't like like it when it's too quiet. That's why I chose a, f a family with four kids. Mm -hmm. um, and they're really social. That was one thing that was really important to me. So we always had people over, which was great. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it was always, it was never boring. And That's good. Yeah. So I guess when, when you were becoming an au pair, do you feel like the matching process kind of helped, helped you kind of get a taste or like an idea of what your host family was like or did it help you feel like you kind of knew them a little bit before coming so they yeah. kind of removed like did it remove any sort of unknown for you uh yes i think i had only three families i think i only did interview three families because of the sinclairs were my first mm -hmm. i talked to them and everything fit because um, my sister went on an eight week um exchange program um, and she had like a super religious family and it was like, it was fine. But um, so for me, uh, but uh, there was like some differences. So mm -hmm. that's how I knew like what questions to ask and like uh, see like what is important to me. And um, yeah, I had like a little notebook because I'm German, of course I have a list. <laughs> and then um, I asked them all the questions and they like checked all my boxes. For me, it was important that they are social and like do like, things as a family and want mm -hmm. me to be a part of that. I don't yeah. want to be the au pair and then they, you know, like they leave me alone. I want to be a part of the family. Yeah. And then also I really want, wanted an active family mm -hmm. because a lot of people um, get fed in the US, let's <laughs> be honest. Uh, the food here can be healthy, but most of it, especially like with all the easy access to fast food, mm -hmm. um, not. So for me, it was important to like have an active family, mm -hmm. like who mm -hmm. work out where like, I feel like I can also like tag along and like yeah. get motivated because if you're the only one working out, it's not as much fun. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I asked all those questions. They checked all my boxes. I talked to two other families, but they didn't had had as many didn't have as many kids. Mm -hmm. One had only one baby, and there was like a mixed schedule. And I was like, that's not what I'm imagining. Yeah. Um, and I I don't I think both only had like one baby, so it was like. Yeah. Because I was infant specialized, so mm -hmm. uh, I was, it was 100% sure uh, that I'm going to be taking care of a baby. Mm -hmm. um, and most families have usually one baby or like two. Um, but because my family is a blended family, which is actually funny because the first family I took care of the children in Germany, they were a blended family too. Mm -hmm. So I, the similarities like fit so perfectly that I was like, this 
it seems like my dream family because they're so similar to the family in Germany that I figured it will work out perfect, which yeah. it did. So I yeah. think the interview process is a big thing. And I think we only talked twice, but like after the first time I already had like a good gut feeling and I think you should trust it because my mom was like, okay, go interview some more because you know, it was your first interview. Mm -hmm. Like, because I was really excited, exhilarated after the interview. And with the others, it was nice, it was fine, but I didn't have the same feeling. And that's how I kind of knew, like it was just like, it felt right. And yeah. that's, yeah, yeah, I think. Well, I love what you said about how you had you know, certain, certain aspects that you're looking for in the family yeah. and that you were also in this decision-making process too. Like it wasn't just up yeah. to a family. It was like you, you know, had your expectations and you knew what you wanted and you were able to find a family that matched all of your, all of your requirements. And, you know, even four years later, you're coming back and you're visiting yeah. them and you feel like they're your second family. Yes. And I think that's really cool that, you know, you get to have that uh, option because you know some with like other cultural exchange experiences you know I feel like the choice is limited yeah and so for the au pair being able to choose your family uh, especially for a year you're gonna be living yeah. them for a year so yeah. you want to have that choice and I think that's really awesome that you found such an such a good fit yeah uh, for your experience I think that's also I always recommend the uh, au pair program to people because like it's not really expensive and you get to choose your family. You have like a saying in it. If like for some reason the family is not as you imagine it, you can always go into a rematch. I mean, it's like a hard decision. You don't really want to do it, but like that's the option, you know, it's not like it's set in stone. Like you have to live with it and you're like super unhappy. You can always like, that's I think a big thing that the au pair has like some power over her own like life and like what she wants to do in the US. And I think mm -hmm. that's really cool. And yeah. that's why I'm always like, hey, if you like to spend time with kids, because I think you should to some point, like you don't have to love kids, but like you should be uh, enjoy spending time with them at mm -hmm. least a little bit. Um, otherwise, I don't think it's a good fit. But then like the pair program is the best because like for me, I'm li I live in like a college town. So I get even like um, even though I was 18, I could still like look at the college campus and like kind of have the feeling of like what it is being like in college like mm -hmm. so you get a lot of different experience not only oh I'm taking care of children I'm being part of family yeah. but also other aspects of the American life so yeah I think it's perfect yeah absolutely I mean like you're living here for a year yeah. and it's like you know you want to be able to, to take advantage of your location wherever you are in the country there's always going to be something to do someplace to see and so yeah. that's really cool. I, I mean, here in Davis, you were able to go to the college campus. And oh, yeah. could you talk about like uh, some of the other places you were able to go to while you were an au pair in California? Uh, with me traveling? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, so I did, of course, San Francisco because it's close. Um, I did Lake Tahoe, uh, LA, um, Las Vegas, Grand Canyon, Joshua National, Tr National Tree Park. Um, San Diego and then I did a road trip to the north of California which was really pretty like we mm -hmm. did the north uh, northern like coast and then Redding and Chico and it was really fun and like the redwoods are stunning and then I also went to Colorado mm. um, I also planned to go to Hawaii and different things but then COVID hit so my traveling was a little bit more limited than the, the traveling of other au pairs but yeah. I still think I made the best out of it and saw a lot of things because it's just easy like if you're off on the weekends you can do like a weekend trip it's not that far usually mm -hmm. like even if you have to fly for like one or two hours it, you can do that in a weekend I did that a couple of times and it was enough time yeah absolutely I mean yeah I feel like you know a couple hour flights and I yeah it's not gonna take up too much time um, yeah and I mean you also have vacation days if you need them mm -hmm. I I think I only took like two or three because um my when my host my family was off for some reason because of a holiday they didn't like i didn't need to take a vacation day for that if they're yeah. here and i'm off i and i had like three a three-day weekend of course i could travel for three days they didn't yeah. mind so that's great um i feel like if there's like a mutual respect and like yeah. it, it's perfect yeah so out of all the places you're able to travel to do you have a favorite um ooh, it's hard because I don't like the city that much, mm -hmm. so I think I really, really like Lake Tahoe, but um, I think maybe my Northern California road trip, like 
the redwoods and all the hikes I did there were really pretty and it was like such a cool experience. I think mm -hmm. that's my favorite. I would recommend that to everyone because I feel like the north of California is such un like it's so underrated because yeah. everybody only sees San Francisco, San Diego and L.A. So, um, yeah, you yeah. definitely check it out. Yeah, I feel like there are so many parts of the U.S. Oh, yeah. that are kind of like hidden gems where it's like, you know, there are the most popular places like like you said, L.A., New York, San Diego, but there are so many places just in every state that are really beautiful and really fun that yeah. an au pair could go and enjoy with their yeah. family or with their friends or with themselves. And that's, that's cool. I'm really glad you got to really take advantage of your time um, during the yeah. program to travel and see things because that's part of the program for au pairs is to be yeah. able to travel. And it's also like even around here, only mm -hmm. like 30 or 45 minutes away, you sometimes find like really cool places, like different lakes where you can do fun activities or like we found a swimming hole, which was mm -hmm. really pretty. So like you always, you can always find new cool places, even though yeah. you're not traveling far uh, because maybe you don't want to do this every weekend. It's sometimes it's a little bit exhausting, but still there's like so much to see. Mm -hmm. um, it's yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So I guess looking back on your time during the program, what would you say was like the most transformational part of the program that impacted your life today? Oh, um, <laughs> okay, so just like, I think that was the first time I really like worked long hours. So uh, it gave me like a little, like, I mean, it's not like working in an office, but it, g it gives you gives you like an impression of how the work life is gonna be. Mm -hmm. And then I think one thing I learned, or like I still do, which I didn't do before, is I do my, my bed now. <laughs> I didn't do that before because I was I always thought it's stupid, but they told us to keep our room clean and so I, I um, have this habit now. Um, <laughs> and especially like you, I, I was pretty young, so I was work living at home and suddenly be on your own, like do your own laundry. There's like a lot of stuff you learn to do, mm -hmm. even though you're living with a family that you're still like, you have some, sometimes you make your own food like for breakfast. So like you're more independent and I think yeah. that really helps you to get like, a good life experience for totally. then when you're really grown up. Even though you're 18, I don't, it didn't feel like a grown up back then. Yeah. So, um, and I feel like I'm also more open-minded to like, like, especially like now that I speak good English, I don't, like I can talk to a lot of people and I feel like the year helped me to like, when I met a lot of different people, how to talk to them and like be, I was always like an outgoing person, but I think that always like mm -hmm. shaped me to be a little bit more outgoing. Yeah. And I like when I remember when I got back to Germany, I was way louder than before <laughs> because I mean America is kind of loud, so I had to readjust to like <sighs> being a little more quiet because the, all the Germans were like, "Whoa, That's funny. this is too much." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> so you kind of uh, mentioned about like your com you like you being comfortable in speaking english can you yeah. kind of talk a bit about um your experience in coming to the u.s and what it was like to speak english 100 uh from that point on like how how comfortable did, did you feel at the end of the program and how do you think the program or how do you think your experience helped develop um, those skills i mean um it helps a lot like i think especially in the first six months you feel like it's not progressing, even though it's progressing a lot, but you don't feel like it does because there's still, like it's still hard to do a lot sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but it gets better. Like I remember I was sometimes really exhausted because like talking in English all day is kind of hard. Um, but then I watched, for example, I watched movies and TV shows in German to mm -hmm. have like a little break. And I had German friends that had to like sometimes have a break of speaking English. Mm -hmm. But um, you, the more you did it, the easier it got. And then I remember the, the first time I did, like, was dreaming in English and I woke up and I said, like, whoa, I, I'm really here now. You know, like wow. it's, it's starting to all come together. And now I'm like when I'm here, especially for a longer time, I, I realize I'm thinking in English, like I'm dreaming in English. Everything mm -hmm. is in English because yeah. you're just so used to it. Yeah. So it, it helps you a lot. Like my English was okay when I came here, but it was not great. I didn't like my English lessons back then. And it helps you a lot. It helps you with like 
being comfortable to speak and the pronunciation, mm -hmm. like my TH in the beginning <sighs> was bad. <laughs> I feel like now I am way more comfortable with that. And yeah. like, I remember comfortable was a word I couldn't, per like I was a comfortable, because when you only see like the written word, you're like, I don't know, it feels like it's weird. Yeah. And I remember my horse kid was helping me trying to pronounce <laughs> it. <laughs> and also uh, the W and the V, mm. it was also like village. I sometimes said village and everyone was like, no, it's village. And I'm like, I don't hear a difference. But it's like the V and the W, uh, which yeah. is like, I couldn't, derf like in the end I could, but like in the middle, I was like, I don't know what you mean. Like I'm talking perfectly. Yeah. They're like, no. <laughs> and then it helps you a lot. Like yeah. your host kids t help you with some stuff. Um, your host parents and just like talking um, and living the life mm -hmm. you will learn so many words like such random words yeah um, my boyfriend's always like how do you know this word I'm like I don't know I just apparently I used it needed to someone somewhere somehow yeah. and that's yeah how you yeah. learn that's yeah I mean it, exposure into the language and yeah. the culture is like probably the best way to learn a language oh, yeah. any language yeah so definitely and if you could give a piece of advice to a new au pair or somebody who's thinking about becoming uh, becoming an au pair, what would you tell them? Mm, I feel like you should just, first of all, just do it. Like, you don't overthink it too much. It's going to be really fun. Um, I'm really passionate about the au pair program because I loved it so much. So if you think about it, just do it. Like, one year sounds sounds maybe long at first but it's not i promise you it will fly by and you will love it like and then just try like we already talked about how to like be that present with the host family to make the best out of that but then also like go to um different like the au pair meetings every month i went to that so i met some au pairs there and all the au pairs they're looking for friends. Like we all have the same mis mission. So it's really easy to find friends. Mm -hmm. And um, if you like, if you're outgoing, just do a lot of stuff. That's how you find people. And then have, you have your friends there and then it's just awesome. I think that's the most important part to yeah. just do it and make the best out of it because then you get the friends and the whole experience and it's just fun. Yeah. Oh, totally. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you had such a good time yeah and that you built such a great bond with your host family I oh mean, yeah coming back and seeing them and spending time with them after the program is just it's really special seeing yeah. these kinds of stories of like families and no pairs keeping in touch oh yeah and maintaining that family bond that, that's really cool and i think that's a really special thing to be able to build yeah with a family it's also really nice because now um i have all the perks of like my host family but i'm and i can play with the kids but i'm not working and like I think it also it like even shifts a bit, a little bit more to family member and friend mm -hmm. when you're not the au pair because sometimes as an au pair you're still working for them so sometimes you have to talk about money or other stuff that's like maybe not as comfortable but mm -hmm. if you like communicate it openly it's fine but I feel like when you're coming back it's even more cool to like be here mm -hmm. and like interact with them it's yeah. just even more like it, yeah it just feels like a family yeah that's awesome so I think my other question is, where do you think you would be now if you hadn't done the au pair program? Um, oh, I think I would, maybe I would be a teacher, but I don't, maybe I also would have done the like study for a teacher for like one or two semesters and then be like, nope, not doing it. Um, so I think maybe I would have been a teacher by now, but I would hate it. Or like be like, this is not hated. I don't think I would hate it, but like be like, this is not 100% the thing I want to do. I think yeah. like for my career, w it was just like such an important thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and also I feel like I'm way, way more like open-minded and I know more about like cultures because like you don't only like it's not only the American culture you like meet different au pairs from different countries so you learn about their um, cultures so it's just like such a cool thing and I mm -hmm. think it really helps you to understand the world a little bit more and yeah I don't think I would be the same person that I am right now yeah I think I would be more shy a little bit quieter and not as talkative maybe mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean yeah i could totally see why how this would be such a life-changing experience and yeah. 
as I said earlier, so glad to hear that it was a, you know, really positive experience for you yeah. and that it was transformational because, you know, that's what this program is about is like transforming lives, uh, become, oh, yeah. finding new family members, exchanging cultures. And you were like the perfect <laughs> like, example of yeah. how this program works. So yeah. I think that's really awesome. It so, is. Yeah. Like, especially, like, even though I had a boyfriend, which was like hard because long distance and stuff, it was so worth it. And yeah, it was just like, yeah, I'm just happy because like just talking to you in English and it mm -hmm. feels so easy right now is like such a great thing and it yeah. feels awesome to like, because you know, it's all because of this year that, and that helped me so much mm -hmm. that I can now have like an easygoing conversa yeah. conversation in English and understand everything and know all the words. And even though I sometimes I don't know every word, I can describe it or like mm -hmm. it's fine. So yeah. I think it's just, it's also such a cool skill, like even in Germany, sometimes people ask you something in English. And like, I think if, you, if you're not used to speaking English, it's like harder for you to like be like, oh yeah, I can help them. But for me, it's like I'm switching and it's like, I'm right there and I'm like, oh yeah, I can help you. You yeah. know, it's totally, yeah, that's really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for talking with us today. It was really, it's really inspiring to hear your story and just to hear kind of like your amazing experience that you had. And it's really special. And really thank you so much for of course. taking the time to talk to us. Yeah, thank you for talking with me and uh, uh, saying all the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Thanks for tuning into this story and be sure to stay tuned for more awesome stories from Au Pair Care.